So I had a just simply insane haul from a Salvation Army today. Somebody donated like the entirety of their old sci-fi book collection. I'll just show you what I got. Everything was two bucks. I think I spent 67 bucks uh, on the whole haul, which is a reckless expenditure of money, but you'll see why I did it. Because it's stuff like this. Uh, Clifford Simax City with this excellent cover and I'll I'll hold them off here and I'll, I'll splash the actual covers up on the screen there so Clifford Simax City this is supposed to be a pretty good book and I just love the cover art and look at the back it's so good two bucks I've never read Simak but he's kind of held in regard as one of the great kind of um, old guard sci uh, science fiction authors, so I'm definitely curious. Look at that, so excellent. Here's a Robert Silverberg that I've never read, Project Pendulum. They had a bunch, not a bunch, a couple of Robert Silverbergs that I didn't pick up. Um, Glass Tower and Hawksville Station. Uh, I left those there just because I already own them and I've already read them, but I've never read a Silverberg that I didn't like a whole lot. And um, yeah, two bucks. This cool back cover here. Some dinosaurs. Don't know what the story is there. Bob Shaw, The Palace of Eternity. And just in case I can't find the uh, JPEG online, I adore this cover. There's just something about this that I absolutely love. I got a couple Bob Shaws. I've never heard of him. But for some reason, something about his books just screams, please read me. There's something about them that just tells me that he is an interesting writer. This actually is not a sci-fi book, A Fairy Tale of New York by J.P. Don Levy. I tend to like books like this. This is pretty cool. The Jewel Hinged Jaw, a collection of essays about science fiction lit that's curated by Samuel Delaney, who's someone that I'm very curious about. I've read part of Hog, which is fun reading. Uh, read it to your kids before bed. Uh, fun for the whole family. It's the most obscene piece of literature I've ever read. Uh, and the fact that somebody was able to produce that book, which I actually like, I think it's for the most part, pretty funny, um, with you know certain exceptions. If someone can write that, can write Hog and still have some kind of mainstream tenability as a writer, then that's someone that I'm very curious about. And I have Dahlgren, which is his big masterpiece. And I'm meaning to read it. It's another Silverberg collision course. Never heard of it. Silverberg was prolific. He wrote. I think the number's like 200 novels or something. He's, he's just written so much. This is actually more contemporary. It's not one of these old mass markets. This is from the 90s, looks like. Lathe of Heaven by Le Guin. I did read it in high school, but I don't own a copy, and it's been a while, and I really like Le Guin. So there it is. John Brunner's The Jagged Orbit. My older brother keeps telling me to read John Brunner. I guess he's a forerunner of uh, Philip Dick. And I was on the lookout for John Brunner, and there it is, Jagged Orbit. I would have bought it even without that recommendation, because look at the cover, it's just so excellent. I really like these DAW paperbacks. I like everything about them, about the aesthetics. These are a set, really. Here's a copy of Ringworld by Larry Niven, that old cornball sci-fi font. Don't have a copy of Ringworld. I hear mixed things about Ringworld, but I'm definitely curious to read it. The only other Niven that I've read is The Moting God's Eye, which he co excuse me, co-wrote with Jerry Purnell. And that's one of my absolute favorite sci-fi's. So I have this corny, excellent, awesome, stained, water damaged copy of Ringworld. Here's a similar copy of All the Myriad Ways. And never heard of it. But I really like that cover. Here's a really beat up copy of A World Out of Time with some kind of snake cat on the cover, which I am for. Here's A Gift from Earth, 
excellent cover on this one. Really like the art. Never heard of these. And a copy of Protector. So I have a matching set, Del Rey, Larry Niven, paperbacks. And those might actually be worth something lauded up on eBay, but they are mine. Here's a book I actually bought because it'll help me defray the costs of this haul. It's a rare novel called The Atonement of Ashley Morden by Fred Bodsworth. And there are only a handful of copies on eBay and all are around the 50 buck mark. I'll check a books, but I should be able to turn a little bit of profit on this and help kind of offset the cost of the books. This is definitely one of my favorites of this haul. This absolutely gorgeous copy of Alfred Bester's Starburst. Star's My Destination is one of my all-time favorite sci-fis. Look at this. Look at this. I would spend 10, 15 bucks on this if I found it at a used bookstore. One of the best covers that I own now. Really good condition too. Looks like it hasn't been, hasn't been cracked open really. Here's a copy of The Deceivers by Alfred Bester. So I now have three Bester books that I haven't read. Those two and Demolished Man. And Star's My Destination was so good that I can't imagine this won't be good as well. And it's illustrated, which might not be a good sign. Night of Light by Philip Jose Farmer. I have only read The Wind Wales of Ishmael, which was a fun book. Wouldn't call it a good book, but it was, it was pretty fun. I actually didn't finish it. I, I read about half, half of it and then sent it to uh, Moid. So, this looks about on par with that. This I, I was so pumped for. James Blish's The Day After Judgment. Blish, I've only read one short story from and I didn't actually like it that much, but look at the cover art. I swear there's uh, like a strong, strong resemblance between this style and Wayne Barlow, who is my favorite sci-fi artist. It looks like he drew this, he definitely didn't, but he has a series where he paints demons and uh, very close to this. Listen to the synopsis. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm actually gonna read this one for sure. So, subtitle, Satan Triumphant. Rome is in fiery ruins, about to drown in a tidal wave. The world writhes in the fires of tormented death. Only Satan is laughing, for the world and all its agony now belongs to it. Hell has risen on earth. But far beneath the silicated ashes of Denver, a handful of men are alive and determined not to submit to evil. They summon their nuclear powers to destroy hell, but what can men do against the almighty evil that is Satan himself? Hell yes. Yes. And here's a copy of The World Inside. In paperback, I have the hardcover. This is one that I have read, but it's one of my favorite books ever. It's definitely my favorite Silverberg that I've read. And I might gift this to somebody. This is the first one that I pulled out of the, out of the pile. Uh, oh, Master Caliban, Phyllis Gottlieb. Look at that. It's the it's some crazy ass premise about human beings and mutants in a war against machines or something. I don't know. It looks great. I might actually read that one too. Virgin Planet by Paul Anderson which is about a man, a male astronaut who lands on a planet inhabited only by women. And it's very stupid and puerile and adolescent and it's mine. Edmund Cooper's The Tenth Planet. I was so, so on this. I've actually read one Edmund Cooper book, um, The Slaves of Heaven, that I thought was surprisingly okay. It was some interesting ideas in there. Edmund Cooper, definitely not one of the top guys. His prose is a little lacking sometimes, but I don't know. I wanted it. Another Bob Shaw, The Ragged Astronauts. This looks pretty cool. And it has a quote from Gene Wolfe on the back saying, just my dish, a hard book to put down. And an endorsement from Gene Wolfe is pretty meaningful. Also endorsed by Michael Moorcock, Roger Zelazny, and Harry Harrison. So someone who had the renown of some of the top guys. Really curious about Bob Shaw. Definitely one of the best finds, J.G. Ballard. The Disaster Area. Just superb cover art there. Don't know anything about it. I'm accumulating quite a J.G. Ballard collection. I've actually never read him. Um, I think I might start with The Drowned World. 
another Silverberg Masks of Time. I actually keep seeing a copy of this at the neighborhood bookstore down the street from me. And I was tempted to buy it, but here it is for two bucks. Definitely, definitely vintage. Harlan Ellison's Strange Wine. So I've only read I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, but I loved it. And Ellison seems like a very irritating human being, but I'm curious about his writing because on paper it should be the stuff that I'm really into. He was, you know, he wrote a lot of horror and sci-fi and sci-fi horror, which is my preferred flavor. So I was meaning to pick up more Ellison to read and there it is. This is the one that I think I've heard of. I think I've heard someone say that Barnard's Planet by John Boyd is really good. And maybe that's why I was so attracted to John Boyd. Um, and I would have bought that anyway, because look at it. Another Brunner, and another just superb cover, Age of Miracles. Another one I would have picked up just so I could look at it from time to time. But Brunner is supposed to be uh, an underrated writer. Very curious. <laughs> this is purely for the cover art. I'll probably never actually read any of this, but look at this book. Look at that. Cosmic Kaleidoscopes. Oh, it's Bob Shaw. Never mind. I think this is short stories with some uh, some kick-ass space demon bikers. Yes. Uh, yeah. Are you ready for an X-rated flick by Leonardo da Vinci, an OK Corral type shootout with time travelers, a ravening monster in the city streets, spawned by a comic book, the world's highest mountain made of fiberglass? That all sounds very boring, but looks cool. Clifford Simax, Cemetery World. There were a bunch of Simax that I left behind, but uh, I, I bought this one on the strength of this excellent, excellent cover art. Destiny Doll by Clifford Simak. This is an interesting one. I'm, I'm curious to read this one. I looked a lot of this up on Goodreads, a lot of these books, and pretty split opinions on this one. There are a lot of people saying that it's uh, actually like a, a pretty superb piece of sci-fi, very experimental and weird, uh, which I like. This is just pure pulp enjoyment, just pure cornball cover art. Some guy on a horse. Ten Years to Doomsday by Chester Anderson and Michael Curland. Probably nonsense. I'll probably never read that, but I love it. Arthur C. Clarke's The Wind from the Sun. Never heard of it. And I should read more Clarke, so why not read one of his unpopular books? And the last one, the God Makers by Frank Herbert. Look at this thing. So this is, I mean, it's worth 67 bucks, right? Plus, you know, the, the profit from the Bodsworth book, hopefully. And um, I mean, the, the that's packed at this point. I was gonna slow down on acquiring these things, but my God, I mean, how could I not? buy that. And I took a video of all the stuff that I had left behind too. So I'll play that now and you can see the rest of the covers.